time for Deep Dish, which is the part of the show where we either go deep on a topic or we dish about ourselves a little bit. And let's go let's... deep on topics. I want to dish about myself. Okay, yeah. okay, we'll start deep. <laughs> no, and kidding. if you consider a deep celebrity, Chad. So, music artist Sia, she's best known for her veils and her crazy wigs, okay. but she said that she hides her face at camera heavy events, including at her shows, because of the negative effects that fame has on her mental health. Mm. So, what do you guys think? Are we so obsessed with celebrity culture that artists have to kind of hide who they really are, even to live semi normal lives? What do you make of this? Well, I think it's, it, it varies, right? I think anxiety is clearly something <clears throat> that she battles with and mm -hmm. she has a talent, but she'd probably just prefer to sing in a booth and perform and people buy her music and that'd be it. However, yeah. with that, you're ushered into, you got to get on tour, you got to perform, you got to yeah. promote your brand. Mm -hmm. Some are comfortable with that. I get that part, so I'm not going to knock her down there. I think other celebrities are actually really savvy about this and understand when I walk out of a restaurant, I'm covering my face. I'm not going to give you that shot that you're going to be able to make hundreds of thousands of dollars on. You're going to invade my privacy to take pictures of me living my life so you can make a paycheck. So some, I know if I block it, that's not going to give you that or opportunity. Or some will just cut deals with the paparazzi. I feel like most celebrities that are heavily covered, they want that fame. Sia doesn't want that fame. She she didn't even plan on becoming known as a face of a song until Titanium was released um, without her consent. And so, I mean, I think she loves creating music. She's in it for the art. She's one of those people who doesn't care about her face being plastered in every uh, magazine. And she doesn't want it to be plastered. She actually talked about um, how uncomfortable it makes her. They and don't go on tour. Though. I guess that's my guess, thing. But, don't she, do it. Like but she cares about performing, and that's why she like covers her face with the wig. She's very low key. She has the like black and white wig. She stands there. And that's why she brought Maddie Ziegler out on tour with her to kind of distract from her own image because she doesn't care about that. Um, so I, I guess I feel like it's um, it's you're sending two messages. So like yeah. that's just part of being a celebrity. You can just do music in your basement if that's the case. Like the point is to get your 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 voice out there, to get your music out there, to get your celebrity out there, so people know you and they consume your stuff. So I can't say that I I I, I sometimes I feel like I have sympathy for celebrities because I do feel like the paparazzi does a lot. At the same time, that's what you signed up for the life that you chose to live. You chose to be a famous person. Yeah, and I look at this as I translate to sports. This, this is something we talk about a lot in sports with professional athletes is do you owe something to the fans? Should you stay afterwards and sign autographs? Mm. Or if you're out, um, do you have an obligation? And, and Charles Barkley famously said, I'm an athlete. I'm a basketball player. I'm not a role model. Mm -hmm. So tying the two together, does Sia owe it to the fans so they see her face so she has this endearing connection, this genuine thing? I don't really know. I don't think oh, so. I owes think it though? That's, that's what, an, that's, that's what I'm saying. I think it. that's the back and forth that people ask. Do you owe something to the fans? I would say no. I think she's allowed to go up there. And if you want to buy tickets, you know you're going to see her face covered. You know what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah. And yet you're paying for that. Right. That's your choice. Yeah, and I mean, I don't think anyone owes it to their fans yeah. to go out there and meet them or interact with them even on social media, but I think that when artists do, their fans love them so much more because they sure. are attainable. So I don't know that, I mean, I think with Sia, most people appreciate her for her music. It's not because they feel like they can have a piece Would you of go her. see her in concert? Knowing that she's covering her face and she's I probably wouldn't mellow. buy tickets to her show. I like her music, but she's not one of those people that I feel like, oh, I have to see her live. But if yeah. she's performing at a festival, she's performing at Lala, I would go see her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm okay with her covering her yeah. face. Um, her is another person, is another artist, sure. new artist that does mm -hmm. that. She kind of has this neo soul R&B vibe, and mm -hmm. she covers her, her eyes and her face a lot and performs in shadows. And so I can appreciate the want for privacy. It's kind of refreshing, yeah. honestly, with so many people, so many reality stars and everyone else. Out there just chasing fame it's a it's refreshing so to true. see someone so talented that they don't have to do I that. guess all I'm saying is if that's really how you feel Sia just refuse to go on tour just really make but, the statement but she say. still likes performing she just doesn't want her face out there I think she's insecure I think that's. I think it's. Uh, I don't I know like if it's as much as it's anxiety. No, I, don't, I think Two it is. She said she has to protect herself, her mental health. So I think it's. She's super uncomfortable. She said that teenagers get on the internet and start criticizing her appearance, and I think that that's what it is. I think the criticism is tough. I mean, we are in the age of social media. I do think paparazzi goes too far. I do think um, so. People go too far on social media. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, if. You don't want to be in front of the camera, then don't be in front of the camera. Yeah, you got to like, develop. It's, it's not fair that you have. It it's not fair that you have to have this defense mechanism, but you got to learn to have thick skin. You know, in this business, people are gonna take shots at you. It's it's a very glorious business. There's a lot of great parts to it, but like with any job, there's a negative that you got to learn to fight through. And yeah. if that's her mechanism, 
Good for her. She's successful. She's yeah. making it work. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you can't argue with that. All right, well, we get up pretty early in the morning. You guys all know that. You're watching <laughs> early in the morning with us. Uh, so, breakfast and food in general is always on top of my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, so, let's talk about cereal. It's one of the traditional breakfasts. What is the best cereal of all time? Ba -ba -ba. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay. So I used to eat cereal every day, <laughs> literally every okay. day, coming home from school and everything. I stopped eating cereal about four or five years ago just because I wanted to be healthier. But let me tell you, the best cereal, Cap'n Crunch Berries. Cap'n oh. Crunch. Cap'n Crunch Berries. And the worst you're saying is basic Cheerios. Yes, the basic ones, not Honey Nut Cheerios. I just feel like your cereal needs a little something, something. They put those strawberries in there to try to make you think it tastes healthy, better. It's so bland. Cheerios are healthy. No. Honey Nut Cheerios are good for you too. Um, <laughs> I, it's just, I, it's just like, why am I eating this? When I'm eating it, I, I don't know why. Or no. like, <laughs> or like um, Wheaties or like flakes that don't have yeah. any frost on them. <laughs> like if you're gonna go in, go all in. And have yes. that sugar with yeah. it too. Mm -hmm. I'm like you, Felicia. I used to eat cereal every single day. It's I used so to eat Lucky good. Charms every single day when I lived in the dorms and cinnamon sugar toast. It's amazing that I'm still here today. <laughs> um, anyway, but now my favorite cereal, the one that I eat the most often, I think it's probably the best cereal of all time, is Raisin Bran Crunch. Oh, wow. Upset City. And That's then, a good one. And then the worst one, I think it's Fruit Loops. Whoa, two cans I know, I know I'm going to get some haters here. I just don't like the taste of any of the little loops. None of them taste the way I would want them to. Like so, fruit? Like fake fruit. <laughs> it's, just, it's not satisfying enough for me. I'd rather have real fruit in my cereal. But fruit Loops. I know that that's not, I know that's but not the other option. But, but the, the milk at the like end, it. it's, all, it's all about with cereal. I'm a cereal connoisseur, everybody. You drink a lot of milk. You know I love milk. Yeah. It's what's that milk going to be looking like Jordan at the milk end cornet. of the that's cereal, right? Ew, so you like to drink the milk at the end? Who doesn't? <laughs> I yeah, don't. I always do. I don't. So first what? of all, you before, don't drink the milk at the end of your cereal. Before I stopped eating cereal, I ended up getting um, uh, using almond milk. So I switched to almond milk, sure. and like if Just I have like a, a really little milk dark left, turn. listen, if I have a little milk left, I have to add like more cereal to finish off. Well, that's, that but milk. you're at least gonna utilize the rest of the milk. I, I'm not gonna waste. Okay. I'm, I'm totally. On, but I'm gonna let you get to yours in a second. But I'm totally on the other I'll side look. of things where I would want. I love the cereal milk so much. I wish I could have a latte made of cereal milk. Wow, you know you can do that. I heard it yes from Krista Green across the studio. Thank you. So you want to put the cereal in the bowl, dump all the cereal out, and, and then just put some espresso in it and steam it up. It's so good. Okay, Jordan, sorry, we're gonna let you share your cereal. I can't believe what you guys have done to this segment right here. Cereal. This is an absolute. Almond milk. This Amazing. is a shame. You have destructed this Raisin segment. Raisin brand. All right, so cereal for me, the one I, I'm going pretty classic here. Uh, Frosted Flakes. Can't go oh, wrong. Oh, good one, Tony Jordan. the Tiger, and that is not a graphic error, ladies and gentlemen. There's no such thing as a bad bowl of cereal. You got Honey Smacks, you got Life, you bowl got Fruit Loops, snacks. you got Cinnamon Toast Crunch, you got Honey Nut Cheerios, Apple Jacks, Fruity Pebbles, and one mm. that I forgot and I battled back and forth with, much okay. like I will with my brackets for that March Madness, which me and Brandon are going to be doing here in a little bit. Cocoa Puffs. And I'm going to tell you why Cocoa Puffs. I know, see, I, I, I get it, Ashley. She's looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> it's because the milk at the end. It's chocolate milk. Uh, the milk is so good. That, that chocolate is the, milk. I like at the, the, um, the cocoa rice krispies. I'll give you the puffs. Anything I chocolate. like the cocoa rice krispies. Anything yeah, chocolate at the end. That's true. A cereal is so good. It's basically dessert, but it's we call it so breakfast. It's so good. It's so good. It'd be really nice if like some cereal just appeared at the desk. Oh my right gosh. Now, and we could uh, are our producers standing by? With yeah, yeah right. Oh, but you know, no, the thing about the, the thing world. about it is, to me, like there's that comfort thing that just makes you feel. I guess long it, for the younger years, like yeah. bowl of cereal in front of me, a huge bowl. Like and my parents so would be so <laughs> mad. I just have like a I trough can, of I've never a full box. <laughs> yeah, close. Your, your yeah. parents had to get another job just to feed all of you guys. Yeah. It was oh three boys this size yeah. in the house. Well, I told growing you. boys. I told you. I mean, like a lot of people out there, we didn't have, like my brother at 10, 9, 10 years old was our babysitter. Like my, both my parents worked. <laughs> And so it cereal. got to a point as we got older and like we were 13, 14, 12, <laughs> watch each other in the summers, my mom would padlock the cabinets with the food. Oh my <laughs> She'd goodness. leave out rations and be like, uh-uh, so I ain't intense. coming home to an empty, so empty what, cabinet of food. What was in the cabinets what, that she would like, lock up? Explain this to me. Like, your mom literally had to lock up There'd food. There'd be food left what out. What is happening in a high school boy's mind? Because I'm just going to tell you, from a girl's perspective, this sounds really bad. Yeah, it does. <laughs> sounds for What is going on in a teenage boy mind that they have to, he's, like... He's eating everything in the cabinet. Why? So, because I'm a growing boy. Felicia, you you know your coffee creamer ain't safe.
safe. I'm taking that one. Yeah, you are. I'm but eating everything. You take inside. that creamer, you're not safe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think that's a great topic, clearly, everybody. Your best cereal, what it is, everybody. Krista Green, help us out. You guys, you're bringing up a lot of good points. But for me, my best cereal, this is super tough because I'm with you, Jordan. There are so many good cereals out there. But I got a side <laughs> with Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Oh. Can't go wrong with the taste. You can see that cinnamon sugary deliciousness. And Good then answer. the milk after. Carly, I'm with you. Add some espresso to yeah. that uh, cinnamon sugary stop, stop. milk. That could be good. so good. So I think we shits. have a new business uh, opportunity, Krista. <laughs> yes, thank you. So this is our cue of the day, everybody. We want to know what's the best cereal of all time and why. You got to tell us right now at the Jam TV show on social media. We might choose your cereal to read <laughs> later on in the show, but if you choose something whack like corn pops or something, probably oh! not. Probably not. <laughs> Cardboard cereal, I'm out with that. Okay, back to you guys. You might get corn pop shame. Yeah, I, like, I like corn pops. You like corn you pops? You like all I of them. I told you I like them all. They're good for like two bites. <laughs>